Okay, as promised, let's talk about Reacher. That's right, season two just came out a few weeks ago and it started off with a bang. You got three episodes right up front and then two uh, in, well, the two successive weeks. And I have to tell you, this first season of the show was amazing and maybe I'll get around to doing reviews for that. But I did want to talk about, well, at least the first episode of season two. In fact, this episode is pretty outstanding and basically the best way you can open up a series to, well, catch everybody up who's never seen it, and at the same time, give just enough ex exposition so that people can enjoy it. So, here we go! So, Reacher Season 2, Episode 1 is called ATM, and it's pretty much obvious why. When you get the show started, you understand that, well, just as you saw in the trailer for the season for the series, uh, you see something happening at an ATM machine. And there's multiple levels at play here, but uniquely uh, very Reacher. And of course, Reacher has now been back out on the road for over two years, something that we find out later in the episode, but it does explain that he really has just been wandering around like his character does. And again, this is the wonderful writing of Lee Child, and we'll get into that in just a little while. Now, it starts out the same way as season one. You have kind of a bang that fires off the episode in more ways than one. And there's a lot of action right up front, which immediately hooks the audience, at least it hooked me, and it seems to be hooking a lot more people because a lot of people are talking about the show. And as I mentioned, if you've seen the trailer, you kind of see what's going on here. Uh, from the very beginning, he's just a man that tries not to get involved and just wants to wander the world in his own way. So what I try to do with this kind of a review is not have a whole lot of spoilers. The only mild spoiler you're going to get is a plot breakdown with a lot of things left out so that you can go and watch the show, but at least have a basic understanding or an outline of what's going to happen during the show. Now, I avoid major spoilers throughout the entire time, so don't worry too much about that. So moving forward on the basics, Jack Reacher formed a team called the Special Investigators. Now, one of the investigators, Special Investigators, is found killed. And he finds this out through an interesting method that is ideated by Neely, who we met in the first season of Reacher, and I found her to be an incredible character. So upon being notified in this incredibly clever way by Neely, he reaches out to Neely to find out what is going on and what actually happened. What he finds out is, puts him in a knee-deep level of intrigue along with a whole lot of other characters that we're going to start to be introduced to in this first episode. Within the first minutes of this particular episode of this show, I was reminded immediately why I fell in love with season one. First of all, the storytelling is, as I said, magical. Lee Child does an incredible job of giving you a character to love, to appreciate, and to understand immediately in Jack Reacher. You're also reminded in just a simple diner scene exactly why you also fell in love with the character Neely, because she is more than capable. She's incredibly clever, smart, attractive, just, just an amazing all-around character. And you think that would be annoying to somebody who reacts to a lot of modern audience push or the message kind of stuff, but believe it or not, none of that exists in this particular show, which is surprising because you would think coming from Amazon, they would be leaning into this pretty hard. At this point, our two protagonists are on a mission to try to con the rest of the special investigator team. And it's been quite difficult because none of them seem to be available. They're out of pocket, out of reach, or maybe no longer with us. And it seems like just, just being stymied in reaching out to their friends to first of all, notify them of what, what's happened, but also to, to try to make sure that they're in a safe and secure environment because they don't really know what's going on. So as they start to make progress, they encounter hurdles, of course, and these hurdles aren't something that you wouldn't expect in any story, uh, but they just kind of fit this particular group of people to a T, which is good writing, but it's also good adaptation because you are able to skip like a whole chapter or two of the book that this is based on 
pretty easily because it's just it's it's condensed in such a an efficient way. Every one of the characters is fleshed out almost immediately in just a few moments of storytelling. And as we are introduced to them along the way, and we'll get more into the additional characters in a future review, I'll say this, you always feel like you know this particular character. And of, of course there's a lot of use of things like stereotypes and, and backstories and things that you would be familiar with, but it's done in such a way that you just, they're immediately ingratiating. And as we approach the end of this episode, we're introduced to a third team member. We, one of the team members we were introduced to is the one that has been killed, but we're introduced to this third one in O'Donnell, who I think is a brilliant character. He's kind of a face. And if you know what that means, he's, he's, he's the pretty boy. And now we find out that he's been a little bit more toned down in real life outside of his role in the special investigators where he seemed to be quite the uh, man whore anyway and as we're introduced to the o'donnell character we are more than a little suspicious of everything that's happening around them because there is a lot clearly somebody is looking for something it is tied to the team at large it seems so they have some very dangerous characters uh, in poor pursuit of them. And you will recognize uh, the primary villain and there's some throwback language in there that's, uh, that's if, if you're paying attention, uh, you'll, you'll catch because of what film franchise he was tied to. And of course, now that our three team members are together, they end up rolling into a fourth team member's house only to discover that that team member is not there, been missing for quite some time, so long that something tragic happens, which we'll get to in just a second. And it looks like the thing that everybody's looking for is revealed uh, in, in, a, in an interesting way uh, in a few scenes before that. There is a list of names or pseudonyms that were encrypted on a thumb drive. And that plays into something that's much broader over the course of the series. In fact, even as you get to episode five, and again, we're only on episode one. Uh, one word of warning, the thing that I really wanted to point out is that when they get to this fourth team member's uh, home that I mentioned just a moment ago, there is a, an animal thing that really bothered me. So if you're somebody who cares a lot for animals, uh, just be aware it's not quite John Wick level of not great, but it's more like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 animal situation, but a little more extreme. And again, I'm not sure how to really describe this without going into spoilers, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to warn you if you're sensitive about animals, maybe towards the end of this episode just be hyper vigilant about uh, averting your eyes or maybe skipping at some point. Anyway, we need to talk about what this particular season is based on. It's the book Bad Luck and Trouble by Lee Child. I'm going to keep saying that name because these books are brilliant and you should probably read them if you really want to have even more depth uh, and more understanding of this character, Jack Reacher, who again prefers to be called Reacher. There's a lot of fun there. As with season one, Alan Rickson is a incredible actor. Uh, surprising. Very big man huge and an incredible performer somebody that i think should have been in a whole lot of other things than maybe the one or two or three things that you've seen him in so far he would be great in action films i just don't know necessarily that he would fit into one he's a true actor rather than just a muscle-bound hulk and speaking of uh neely uh which is spelled kind of strangely anyway speaking of her her name is uh maria sten and she is phenomenal in her role i can't say enough great things about her we also have some other characters female characters that are introduced later on all of whom are incredible actresses and very believable in the roles that they are portraying. And finally, the third actor we mentioned uh, that plays O'Donnell is incredible. A perfect face kind of character. Uh, a lovable rogue, very Han Solo. I again, all of these stereotypes and these kind of these familiar feeling characters really help get this show moving very quickly, which is why it only takes a few episodes for you to completely fall in love. And at this point, if you're not hooked because of my review, do yourself and me a favor. 
watch at least three episodes of Reacher. In fact, you can go back to season one and it'll have the same effect because all it takes for something that's truly good, especially in television, is three episodes. If it takes longer than that, well, it's probably not a good show. Although you probably would have surmised that before the third episode. But the reason I say this, and I'm so invested in the three episode rule, is because of Breaking Bad. Had I not watched the first three episodes of Breaking Bad, I would have missed out on some incredible television. So that's it for the breakdown of the plot of this mostly spoiler-free review. Now let's get into the ratings. This is a solid 8 of 10 television program. This is a 4 of 5 television program, and we're only through five episodes that I've seen. And I just gave you the first episode plot breakdown, so maybe I could get you interested. We'll go into episode two, season two, in just a few days, and hopefully you'll follow along because it gets even better. Uh, by the time we're through five, which is the most recent one as of this recording, I think uh, things are moving forward at a very aggressive pace, and it's getting more and more exciting, just like with season one. And with the rating in of, well, eight and well, four out of five, pick one, whatever scale you like, I'll say this, I always look forward to good television shows. And believe it or not, Reacher season two, episode one, is just the beginning of another great season of television. And if they keep going down this path and they avoid Jennifer Salky at Prime, we could end up with seasons that are worth watching. And nowadays, that's saying quite a bit. On that note, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others. And until next time, see ya!